All right, let's get down to business. So I promised you guys every month for a while until I get tired, I'm going to do one of my favorite all-time series that I haven't already done if I haven't already done it, or I might redo it and do it in more greater detail. Last month, the month of October, you got my first taste, which is a new thing I'm doing on this channel where I go to one of my favorite series of all time and either talk about how great it was until the end or how it crapped the trash and went into the toilet. Last month, I did Grimm, which is one of my favorite shows that crapped the toilet. It did. It was really bad at the end and in the middle and a little bit in the beginning. I explained everything and the reason why I say that, but I still love it. And you can critique something and love things. And I'm going to have to do a lot of lip biting when it comes to this series that I'm doing for the month of November. I'm doing it for the month of November because, you know, the month of November is all about the colonizers and Thanksgiving and whatnot. So what better way to end November than to talk about a TV show that is near and dear to my heart and has a lot of issues and sucked by the end and actually had some racism on set, some issues Sleepy Hollow, starring one of my favorite all-time actresses, Nicole Bahari. She went to Juilliard. I love her so much. She is someone who was, I don't like to say blacklisted because I don't like saying things that are black in a negative connotation. So I do my best to call it something else. If you hear me say blue listing or something like that or blue mail, it's because I don't like using black all the time, 1000% for negative things. She was blue listed from Hollywood because of a lot of things that happened on this set. They treated her very poorly. They treated her like she wasn't the leading actress on the show. And then ultimately they gave her show to another actress, basically killed her off, gave her a terrible slavery background and then killed her off. And when it comes to historical accuracy and whatnot, and oh, that's just the ancestors. That's just what was happening at the time. Yes. That could have worked. It could have worked wonderfully, but they didn't take the time to do anything great with it. I stand by what I said. Could have been great, but it wasn't. But we're not going to talk about all that because that does not happen in the pilot. Even though it's called Sleepy Hollow and we know Sleepy Hollow as like Ichabod Crane's story, she still was greatly a part of it before they threw her to the wayside. And also, I do believe, like I said, I think she is very well educated and she is very well versed within her field and she deserves more respect. Sleepy Hollow is a four season series with very consistently inconsistent episodes per season. By that I mean season one has 13 episodes that are available. Season two has 18, season three is 18, and season four has 13. So I don't know if they did that on purpose because I could have sworn they got canceled. Not for anything specifically, not for what they should have gotten canceled for, but just for the simple fact that it was so bad no one was watching anymore. So I'm unsure if they <laughs> like ended really good because unlike every show that I'm going to be doing for the first taste for the most part, I've watched every episode of Merlin. I've watched every episode of Grimm. Even when Grimm got bad, I've watched every episode of Grimm. I did not see every episode of Sleepy Hollow, the last season that they made. Season four, even season two was like... Mm -hmm. It's, it's horrible. It's bad. It's bad. So without further ado, we're going to get into Sleepy Hollow season one, episode one. Again, we're calling it the pilot because back then, back then they used to just call every first episode the pilot and they didn't even care to even give it a name. They did it in Grimm. They're doing it here. They're kind of around the same time. Like I was watching this as I was watching other shows, but Sleepy Hollow, let's just get into that real quick. I love turning story on an ear type stories. That's why I love Merlin. That's why I liked Grimm. That's why I liked Once Upon a Time. But Sleepy Hollow just had something about it that was so great before it turned trash. And I'm, I'm gonna let you know when it turned trash if I get that far. Like I said, the first tastes are simply season one, episode one. If you want me to do more, you have to get likes on this video. You have to get views on this video. I'm not gonna do a single one of these until we hit like a thousand likes on each one of these videos or at least one of them so that I know that you're interested in me taking the time out of my life to go through each one of these episodes or at least each one of these seasons. I may do season by season or I may do episode by episode depending on how much love the video gets. So season one, episode one, the pilot of Sleepy Hollow. 
starts with the good old fashioned war. You see the red coats, you see the blue coats. If you're a history buff or a war buff even of history, you know what battleground, battlefield time this is. So supposedly this is during the Revolutionary War and Ichabod Crane is fighting on the side of the blue coats against the red coats. However, there's something that I have to let you guys know about Sleepy Hollow before you get into it or you even try to watch it. Um, it's on Hulu right now for free. If you have Hulu subscription, I do believe we have Hulu subscription, so I don't know what's off the subscription. They should just have people. If you have Hulu, you should be able to watch stuff on Hulu. You shouldn't have to add anything, but here we are. Here we are living in this world. But to let you know about Sleepy Hollow, there's a lot of not new ideas. This is just as far as I'm going to say. And yeah, you could be like, well, Grimm is based on stuff that already exists. Yeah, but they actually do cool things with that. You'll notice, you'll start to notice the theme of them taking things like that's Pandora's box. That's literally, they said that's um, Jack the Ripper's knife. They literally have they literally, it's like magic creatures. It turns into like Friday the 13th, the series type situation, which is another series I'm going to do. I may do it for Halloween next year, 2024, but we'll see. We'll see what time has for us. You know what I mean? Because that's one of the best TV shows in the world. One of the best TV shows in the world. I, I'm standing on it 10 toes, bro. 10 toes. 10 toes, 10 fingers. I'm standing on it. But Sleepy Hollow has a lot of things that are things that already exist and they try to make it exist into the world of Sleepy Hollow. And if we're going to talk about this, I got to let you know. So his enemy, his enemy is the Headless Horseman, obviously. Ichabod turns him into the Headless Horseman by decapitating him. That's basically the gist of the beginning. It shows that happening. Katrina, his wife, and everybody else falls into place. And you could say, oh, this, this show's about Ichabod. It's not about abigail mills however she still was leading role in this tv show i'm not going to argue with anyone about her role in this tv show argue with your mom so ichabod literally fights this dude and in the beginning in the beginning it makes it seem like this guy's just some rough housing dude you know when there's a villain and then when he either turned it to the good side or you you understand this villain to be uh not a, a shadow not a threat anymore like voldemort situation voldemort was scarier and people said they were scared of voldemort when they looked at him i kind of wasn't but it, he was scarier when he was just this creature this being this entity that you could not even say his name but when you see him it's like okay okay you, you kind of look like a snake dude it's okay it's whatever to me it's whatever i've never been afraid of what voldemort looks like but I loved the what it looked like. I loved the practical stuff. I love this show called Face Off. There's so many shows we got to go into. Face Off is so good. You should watch Face Off. It's really, really good. It's on Netflix right now. Go watch Face Off. They only have two seasons. You don't have to watch season one to understand season three or four or five or whatever's on there. But so basically, you see this guy who's like got a little mark on his hand. You clearly see there's something and then they both look at it together. Ichabod literally was slashed in the chest, bro. Slashed in the chest. And he's about to kill him and he turn, takes his head off. He literally, Ichabod in his final dying death, decapitates this man. And he looks at him with his head off. And he's like, okay, I'm going to die. So they both die together and their blood combines, and something has happened that has awakened Ichabod from the dead. So he comes out, and like, okay, I just want to let you know, around like the two minute mark, or like one minute and 40 second mark of this show on Hulu, without ads, you're gonna see this man pop out the ground like a daisy. And they're going to replay this same scene for like, for a while, and you're gonna, it's gonna be comical to you. It's comical, when I saw it, I was laughing because I was like, I remember this scene continuously being played. He literally pops out the ground and it's like, okay, we can, we got it the first time. We got it the 50th time, bro. We do not have to see Ichabod Crane come out the ground again. But for some reason, somehow Ichabod's coming out of the ground and he's like a zombie, but not really. Cause he's, he's literally the same as he died. Like he literally is the same as he died. So he comes out the ground, out, it looks like a crypt, and he's like in the creek, and he doesn't understand what's happening because to him, he just went to sleep for a second. He's drinking the water from the creek. He doesn't know what's going on. He's walking around like newborn Bambi in the woods, trying to figure out what's going on. He's on a street road. He's on a road that's paved, and he doesn't understand it because he's like 1781 or something. I don't, like I said, I don't know the numbers of the thing. It's just like, so supposedly it's the Revolutionary War in America, so... 
He doesn't understand. He almost gets ran over by two cars, which is really ridiculous because there's no other cars going by. You can see a man in the middle of the road. There should be no reason why other than the fact that they're just like, this is just for cinematography and all that to make it look cool that he almost got ran over by a truck and a car. But those truck and the cars could have slowed down a long time ago. There's nobody on the road. He didn't just come out of nowhere. He was on the road for a good, like, three seconds before they could have slowed down. And yeah, you could be like, oh, that's not how it works. And it's like, okay, okay, dude. It's not like, like I said, he's not Samara. He did not just fabricate out of the air. He was on the road for a good bit. The truck goes right by, right? But the car, the guy gets out of the car. Ichabod runs away from him. <laughs> And it kind of looks like Silent Hill. Kind of looks like Silent Hill. You know how that thing where it's like, welcome to Silent Hill? There's a sign that's basically like, welcome to the village of Sleepy Hollow. And that's really cool. It's a bird. It's a bird on there. I don't think it's a crow, actually. I think it's a um, hawk because it's brown. So we get to see my girl, Nicole. And like I said, like, it's just like, you can be like, oh, Ichabod was the first one you saw. But let's just be honest here. You know who the main character of the show is going to be if they're in the pilot episode. It doesn't matter who's first. But if you want to play who's first games, we can with a lot of other people. However, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to talk about Resident Evil at all in this, except maybe now and maybe later. Anywho, you get to see my girl, Abigail Mill. She is a police officer. They always do this. It's a little annoying. It's like, whatever. Okay, whatever. And you... You have to make the POV character a uh, cop if you want them to get all the dirt on everything. That's literally why they had what's her face as a sheriff on Once Upon a Time. Because you can't, there's a lot of things uh, just as someone who's not of the freaking cop people can do. There's so much, only so much you can do. There's only so many perspectives you can see it through. But So she's a cop and she's got her deputy or whoever, whatever his name is. I don't know. Mr. Krabs, bro. It's Mr. Krabs. It's uh, g -g -g Mr. Krabs, the dude that plays Mr. Krabs. He is like one of the best actors in Hollywood. And again, I think he doesn't get enough recognition. There, there's a lot of men who y'all get recognition to for being garbage, incentive to misery. I don't know about this guy's political nothing. I just like him for him. I like the acting he does. So let me know if there's a reason why I should hate him. And maybe I will. But until then, I like this guy. I like him a lot. And he was in Pet Cemetery 2, not the new one, the old one. And I kind of hated that one just because the fact that it should have been a prequel to Pet Cemetery 1, the old one. I think his name was Gabe with Gabe in it. I don't remember. All I know is this guy's cool. He's cool. And I like his acting. And he's in this, this TV show for a while. So you can get used to him. Um... <laughs> I only know. They only, I know. I know what happens. So we get through their banter back and forth that like he's going through homicide or whatever. That's his thing he's doing right now. And then he's like, oh, don't worry about it. He doesn't give that many details because he's like, oh, you're leaving anyway. So whatever. He's salty that she's leaving, even though like, girl, get, get out of this podunk town, girl. This place is holding you back if she only listened. So I'm going to call him Mr. Crab Sheriff, Sheriff Mr. Crabs, one of those things. Sheriff Crab. I might call him Sheriff Crab because I don't know his name and I don't remember. So Abigail Mills is talking to Sheriff Crabs and there's a priest just staring over there like he has never seen a black person before. So the sheriff is like father to the dude, the priest that looked like Clint Eastwood. Now tell me that's not Clint Eastwood. Like I'm going to have to look this up later. If that's Clint Eastwood, that's crazy because he looked just like Clint Eastwood. So the sheriff sees the priest, priest sees the sheriff, they see each other. So Abigail Mills gets something on her radio and the girl's like, yeah, the horses are spooked by something. And she's like, okay, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that what she's trying to do is broaden her horizon, get more income, get more income, get more income. Abigail Mills is trying to get more income as an FBI agent or something or whatever she's trying to do. I don't know. I think it's FBI, but basically this guy's literally trying to hold her down but if this man if this if this sheriff scumbag of a loser scumbag and i'm not talking about the actor i'm, I'm talking about the character himself the character if this scumbag is literally talking about hold oh, she's literally trying to hold her back literally y'all always try to hold women back when we do something you literally trying to hold her back if she wants to do fbi and get more money or whatever like let her do that and then she's sitting here laughing to herself because she's got to go run after someone 
who spooked the horses. Like horses can be spooked by so many things. And now she's doing this menial work. And he's like, you're going to miss this. Like, no, she's not. Let her rise. Let her rise and let her shine. Let her get her money. Anyway, we good, we good, we good. So they go to see what's wrong with the horses. They go to the farm where the horses are screaming and yelling and stuff. And they're like, Mr. Huckabee or whatever his name is. I don't care. I don't know his name. Don't care. And there's no answer, but the horses are still screaming. Old uh, 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 goes to the stables where the horses are and investigates. So both of them are equipped with like these two small itty bitty like trash good for nothing lights like that aren't even illuminating past their nose like it's so bad that i can barely see what they're looking at so abigail mills investigates his car and a shotgun pops out she reports it into her little walkie talkie thing the tension is rising she's following where she thinks huckabee is or whatever and she's like i found oval teen or whatever his name is i literally cannot retain his name i'm so sorry i heard it like three times and i can't but he's headless he's headless so it's kind of like oh no my gosh and then a oh, uh, gu says this is a sheriff put your hands where i can see them and then some guy with no head walks out oh sometimes i get a good feeling yeah i think the cinematography of this first episode is really cool for the most part for for what it was for when it was so when you see someone with no head do you a run B, as the sheriff of the town starts shooting that thing, or C, run and shoot. I personally feel like I would start shooting it, run, and not hold my ground because, like, maybe it can be staggered, just, you know, like Mr. X or whatever, but I don't think something that has no head that's walking around can be stopped with bullets. That's just my opinion. You can have a different opinion, but I just know one thing, one of us is going to be safe in that situation. One of us is going to survive. So old Mr. Crab Sheriff starts shooting him and holding his ground and not going anywhere. Just shooting a dude that has no head. What do you think that's going to do? He has no skull. So good old headless horseman grabs his white horse that somehow has been here since 1795 or whenever the crap was and runs off. Abigail Mills sees her sheriff on the floor with no head because he just got his head shucked off like an oyster. And for like the third time, we see that there's a mark on the hand of the headless horseman he wasn't headless in the beginning he was he was head full horseman but now he's headless so abigail mill sees that her sheriff is dead and it's pretty funny because that guy all he had to do was like get out of there i don't understand why it was locked behind him i, I don't remember seeing him lock the door behind him when he came in and i don't understand how it was locked the way it was if he did lock it from the other side don't make no sense but all in all he's dead Rip to Sheriff Krabs, RIP to a real one. And then um, she says officer down and her mic walkie talkie. And I'm just like, I guess copaganda, another another show that's kind of copaganda in a sense. Again, for those who didn't watch my Grim video, please go watch that as well after this video if you'd like. Copaganda is basically propaganda that is put in just regular TV shows and even shows that surround cops. Like, I guess this one could be considered that in a sense, because it does surround like the precinct and whatnot, just like Grimm. It kind of sets as a counter criticism of police and anti-police sentiments. So basically it puts them in a better light than what they really are in real life. That's why you'll often see cops in TV shows as black women, sometimes as black men. Grimm was more propaganda than this show, however. I do believe that there's more of a... Um, patriotism type situation when it comes to the show rather than actual propaganda it's more like um propaganda for nationalism and whatnot but um we can get into that if you guys like this show if you guys would like me to do the whole season different seasons but as of right now we're just doing season one episode one so officer down abigail mills says and they're like what what you talking about Willis?" and she doesn't even talk about the horseman running away <laughs> But the guy that's in this show, I like him. But y'all will know him as someone else. I know I didn't watch Harold and Kumar before I was like basically an adult. So I didn't know this guy was from Harold and Kumar when I watched the show. So the Harold and Harold and Kumar is her counterpart for the rest of the show, basically. Except when he, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to spoil a lot, but I'm not going to spoil everything. So I'm going to just say that 
I'm going to just call him Harold because y'all know him as Harold from Harold and Kumar. So Officer Harold is here and he's driving and he hears that there's an officer down. So we know that he's going to be a character. Brings into action like Batman. I... I I think it's hilarious. And everything's coming to a head because Ichabod stops like in the middle of Officer Harold Nakumar driving down the street. So he's like, oh my goodness, what is this dirty bum doing in my face? <laughs> he's going to catch a lot of strays. This 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 actor and this character is going to catch a lot of strays from me because with your whiteness, you could have helped Nicole. I don't know if you've helped her at all. I just know that there didn't seem to be any help given. If you're going to be in this society and you want racism to stop it starts with you calling it out and making sure that people are safe and taken care of and nicole was definitely not in my opinion and what i don't understand about this scene with officer harold nakumar literally putting a gun to ichabod and saying put your hands up as if to think that what what probable cause do you have to aim your gun at someone who is looks dirty he looks like a bum he looks like he stinks he needs a bath like he has no probable cause no one said hey be on the lookout for someone who's dirty like literally like there was no description for you to take your gun out and aim it at ichabod in this moment this is the only time i will defend this man maybe a few other times there are a few other times i can remember where I, i'm gonna defend him but for the most part this guy's scum in this show anyway and that's another reason why i feel like sleepy hollow in itself from what I remember, isn't copaganda because a lot of the times the cops and the people around Abigail Mills who are in her actual precinct are working against her. While in Grimm, it seems like they're working in tandem aside from the betrayal, but I'm not going to spoil Grimm for you. Grimm is such a good show. It, it gets really bad. I feel like it was a good show. It had a lot of things that it could have worked on and there's a lot of problems with it, but it's still good. Now this show, this show didn't hang in as long as Grimm did. This show got bad pretty quick. So Ichabod is arrested and put in a holding cell for no reason. I, like no reason. Like I don't understand. Like I watched this show over and there's no reason why they would have probable cause to arrest this man. He was literally just in the streets and he looks disoriented. What he needs is help. But whatever, whatever. Okay, so the next scene kind of explains why they arrested him. So they think that the person that Abby thought was on the horse was the one who killed Officer Krabs. She goes in and sees his face and she's like, it's not him, even though he didn't have a head. So it's like that should have negated this dude to begin with. Like I said, I, I still have no reason why they, they arrested him. This is the reason that they're giving. And I'm saying that it is very weak. It's a weak reason. So she describes him as wearing a red coat, turncoat, red coat. And Ichabod looks up like, oh my gosh. Ichabod's like describing, oh my goodness, is it this guy? And she's like, oh my goodness, how'd you know all this? And he's like, I killed this dude. I took his head off. And then she's like, who are you? And it's just like, I'm Ichabod Crane. But it cuts before he can say anything. And they put him up to a lie detector test, which again has been proven that it doesn't do anything. And it's like literally serves no purpose. You can get people on it, but like the majority of the time it's like, okay, okay, dude, okay, dude. So Ichabod Crane is from a long time ago, back when they were just like putting maggots in your arm and saying that that's going to help you or something crazy. Like they were just doing crazy crap. So he doesn't know what anything is. He doesn't know what the lights are. He doesn't know what the cameras are. He's asking questions and he's like, what right do you have to hold me? And he literally knows the law better than these people. Like these people literally, if this guy was not a dude that just crawled out of the ground two seconds ago, he would have already asked for a lawyer. But he doesn't know the laws. He doesn't know what's happening. So he's just there. He's just here attached to this lie detector test. He's being held as a murder suspect, even though he doesn't have the items. I literally said he was wearing a red coat. This guy's clearly not wearing a red coat. He clearly doesn't have the brand on his hand. He clearly isn't as tall and he clearly has a head. So this is literally pointless. And I completely forgot that there's this guy in the show. Orlando Jones. That's another reason why I watched this show. And it got bad and it was horrible. That guy that was in American Heroes or something or something, American Gods, he's really good. He was also on Everybody It's Chris as his um, teacher that helped him or whatever. It'll be a nice surprise for you to see him here. So while they ask him, they like, what's your name? He said, my name's Ichabod Crane. He was a historian at a college or whatever. He was enlisted into the Queen's Royal Regiment in the American colonies to fight the Patriots. So basically, according to our history in America, Ichabod was the bad guy. <laughs> we, we, the, like 
in all honesty, the way if he's if the way he said it made it seem like like we're not for the crown. We ain't for the crown here, but we, like I said, this is more like patriotic propaganda in this TV show. But whatever. And also, there's a lot of power, like you can be patriotic. The patriots aren't just the only patriotic people. Patriotism can come from any form, like, and I feel like maybe patriotism is like a smaller version of nationalism. I don't know. I'm not getting into this. I'm not no professor. So turns out he's not the bad guy. He's a good guy, everybody. Yay! He defected from the crown, even though the queen was legit lit like queen elizabeth the first was the most legit queen england ever had the second girl ain't got nothing on queen like queen elizabeth the first like everything she did and yeah there's a lot of bad things that she did that i don't like i'm not gonna talk about it here i'm gonna just say that if y'all are gonna play games and and act like every king wasn't killing people for no reason that man killed her his wife because he was sick of her honestly and you're gonna tell me that queen elizabeth oh that's no better no better shut the Anyway, Ichabod Crane said he defected and then he admits to becoming a spy for the Patriots, basically. And technically, he's the one that betrayed the guy. But whatever, you want want to play games? We we can play games and act like, but everybody loves a good defector when it's like against bad guys. So whatever. He said, the rule of tyranny betrayed the weight of my conscience. He he talks and like, I really like how Ichabod talks. Like, I really like it. It's it's really fun, especially when people are like talking like ordinary. And then he's like talking like that. He does this the whole show, mind you. I don't remember if he evolves his vocabulary. The fish out of water thing, they they play a little a little too long. But but whatever, whatever. That's fine. I, I still like that character specifically for that. That's it. Everything else, garbage. And I'll let you know when it happens. Supposedly, he became a spy under <laughs> General Washington, George Washington. And he's telling this all to the people in the precinct. <laughs> so he was sent to basically where people die in war or they get amputated or they do whatever. They put the maggots in your arm. Whatever they do in the medic camp tent place, that's basically where he went next. He didn't die on the battlefield. However, later down the line, that's kind of retconned. There's a lot of things they retconned for this show to make sense. But as it stands right now, season one episode of The Pilot, he gets sent to the medic tent. And his wife, Katrina, is there trying to treat him for his fatal wounds. <laughs> and the guy who is doing the um, lie detector test is very nonchalant about this guy. Even though he's telling the truth based on the lie detector test, he's like, uh, good news, you won the war. <laughs> Bad news. He basically is like 200 years ago. It's like He says that little shtick and then gives him a $1 bill showing that George Washington is on it. And he's sitting there looking at it. And it, it's so crazy. I love shows and movies like this where it's like old meets new. It's so cool. That's why when I discovered Once Upon a Time, that first season, superb, spot on. The only thing I would say about, I can't even, I'm not even spoil it. We'll talk about Once Upon a Time when I do my first taste of that show. But basically, he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't remember anything past him being in that tent with his wife and dying and then coming back in the ground. <laughs> He's sitting there looking at that bill for a little bit. So... Abigail Mills is not so sure they should call Ichabod Crane crazy, but Orlando Jones is like, yeah, no, this dude's crazy. I don't believe that there's no head on the guy's shoulders. I believe he's the killer, so we're going to send him to the psych, and he's hoping that he won't pass so that they can arrest him for the murders, I bet. But Abigail's like, I want to interrogate him myself. And he's like, no, (laughs) no. I think he just wants to close this case. He literally just like boops her on the nose or whatever and says, get out of here, woman. We're done with this. He doesn't specifically say that. But the way he talks is like really misogynistic to her, talking down to her. Like, oh, just like, just go home. You need some sleep. By the way, I'm eating a potato cake. I'm hungry. So she pulls out the... I am but a wailing widowed woman. Because she lost her partner. Not her real partner, but her work partner, Sheriff Krabs. And she's like, let me interrogate him. Black guy's like, no. Then she's like, at least let me transport him. And he's like sitting there looking at her. She pulls the, I need closure. This will help me get closure, maybe. And it works. (laughs) Okay, and then this is where it gets right into showing how Ichabod Crane is. Okay, so he's, he's a good guy for the most part. But half of his character is a bad guy, okay? And you got to stay with me when he actually does it. If you would like me to do the whole season and if you would like me to do the whole series, 
please hit that like button, share, comment. Let me know what you think about Sleepy Hollow. If you do go and watch it, it's on Hulu. But right now, Ichabod is like, oh my goodness, what army do you serve in? Because Abigail's like, we're going to head out right now. And she's like, what you talking about, Willis? And he's like, oh, you've been emancipated from enslavement. And she's like, boy if you don't she basically is like i'll play along she thinks he's a part like he's senile or whatever i don't know what she thinks but she's like showing that she's a lieutenant or whatever and she's like i can use this gun on you son and he's like oh are you insinuating that i accept slavery i was actually there when they were talking about abolition and whatnot and whatever she said slavery has been abolished for 150 years and she's like it's a new dawn it's a new day it's a new life for me yeah so he's been dead for 250 years and another thing you always have to have backstory to things and you also have to get it to the audience without making it seem too drawn on what i can say about sleepy hollow is that the, the exposition dump are very normal like they're they don't feel like dumps they just feel like they're having a conversation some conversations a little sketchy a little bit but i think it's good i think it, this is a good first episode but um basically she takes him out to the car and she's like i don't i'm not gonna say i believe you but i need your help understanding what i saw because he's like oh you saw the headless horseman too isn't it crazy that we both come back and he's been dead for 250 years? I'm not trying to spoil everything, but if I slip up, I slip up and I'll let you know. And this is the jerk move right here to me, in my opinion. Some people may think this is normal, but I just think this is a jerk move on Ichabod's part. She's like, this is weird for me. Like, you just come out of nowhere. He's like, it's weird for me. Like, it could be understandable, but he's like really being a jerk about it. Like it's both weird for them and he probably thinks it's better for her because she knows her life and she's not the one that it's happened to but she is a part of the situation now and she also just lost someone and she's supposed to be normal like she's not able to take time to cry and they want her to they literally want her to but she can't because she literally just saw this situation she's trying to get closure and that's exactly what she said to the guy that's above her now at the station he's really snappy at her and it's so annoying and it's like whatever okay whatever it's one of those things like on rush hour another movie i love to death but there's a lot of problems with it but where carter and lee were like going back and forth being mean to each other they're being mean to each other now and i'm fine with it, it is what it is it's whatever because they're both going back and forth but she's like get in the car because we're supposed to go to an insane asylum i'm supposed to drop you off there and he's like oh you're gonna share a cell with me because you're saying the same thing i'm saying she's like get in the dang car before i shoot you boy and it's hilarious it's quite comical if you will so he's in the car and he's like taking in the world like wow this used to be that place and that used to be this place and she's like is, is this place now and like he's just amazed by like the window going up and down and just all the gadgets in the car like he's very like fish out of water i really love situations like this but there's just something about it like we'll, we'll continue if you guys want me to continue doing this season or this series you gotta let me know in the comments i'll get into it when i get into it but i'm basically gonna mostly talk about what happens in the first episode for this first taste so once again ichabod crane pulls up with his 250 years ago standpoint talking about when was it acceptable for ladies to wear trousers and everything you say is gibberish to me it's like a chicken blah, 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 blah. that's why i don't care that she tried to say that she was gonna shoot him because like he really be he really be trying her like she could literally like tell him to get out and send him off to another place and then that's it that's it for him <laughs> literally and then i guess it's whatever because i don't want to spoil i don't want to spoil about the headless horseman just now just now abigail mills has all the power here so here we go once again this is the parallel this is why i say this show is every much as much her show nicole show as it is ichabod and that actor who plays ichabod who didn't do enough to help her because if he did do enough they wouldn't have killed her character off so that they wouldn't have to quote unquote deal with her anymore and he did not do enough i don't care what he did because it wasn't enough he was on the show still and she wasn't he was the star quote unquote so he should have used his star oh you want that like they ended the show eventually but they still had a show when nicole was released but let's get back to the show let's get back to the first bro i can't even i can't even bro so angry so basically she's the parallel to ichabod he was for the crown 
And then he rebelled against the crown to fight for the patriots. And the headless horseman, from what I can remember, was upset at him for doing that. So he was like, I'm going to kill you because they were both on the same team. They knew each other. They knew they knew each other. But I'm not going to like they're he they retcon this dude so much. The headless horseman is think of the headless horseman as being Jason Voorhees. He has the bald head Jason Voorhees look in the beginning. This is a spoiler. When we realize who this person is, they turn him into Ghost um, from Scream. Like, it's hilarious to me to see them retcon his character so crazily. It was so hilarious when I saw that. But it's not happening anytime soon. So, in the car, she's like, I want you to take me to where you said that you woke up. And he's like, oh, you're breaking orders. You're going against your orders. We know we see the parallel, which is another, like, I'm telling you, I will continue to talk about this. Justice for Nicole. Justice for Abigail Mills. Justice. Because it was parallel. This show is their show. It's not called the Ichabod Crane Hour. It's not called the Abigail Mills Hour. It is called Sleepy Hollow. So you can have reason to believe that they both are leading actors and actresses. There is no supporting here between the two of them. And then we get a little flash because Ichabod sees the father that we saw inside the diner from the very beginning of the episode. He stares at Ichabod and then Ichabod is like looking at him and then there's a flash to back when Ichabod was alive in his time to this man, to this man. So he's been there. It's not even like a Inuyasha, you know, in Inuyasha where Kagome is the reincarnation of Kikio. It's not that, but he thinks he sees him and he doesn't even tell Abby about it. <laughs> so they get into the cave. So it sounds like Abigail Mills is recording herself of her findings, what she's found. And then Ichabod picks up like this old book covered in like dust and dirt and muck. Looks like the Ankyrenian to me, but psh. this is what I don't like about this whole situation. So as you know from the beginning, and you'll soon know throughout the whole show, the whole premise of this entire show rests upon things that have already existed, that have already happened, that are coming through a different way, so... Four horsemen of the apocalypse, one of them is war. And the headless horseman is supposedly one of the four horsemen. And he's got a white horse. And it says that he'll have a bow, but he doesn't wield a bow. He wields an axe. And that's one thing that they could have just literally had him have a bow. But it's because they wanted people to be decapitated. And they didn't think that a horseman could decapitate anyone with a bow. It would just be too crazy. So they didn't do that, which... All they had to do was not have him also take people's heads off. It didn't make any sense. It made sense in the grand scheme of things, but it didn't make sense to the people who, like, what is he doing this symbolism for? For people who don't know who he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, him coming back 250 years later, he's cutting people's heads off because he had his head cut off, but why does anyone care? Like, it would mean more if he was haunting, like, back in his time when people knew, oh, you got get your head chopped off, what? But... Ichabod Crane finds the book and it's a Bible and it's got the book of Revelations or whatever marked on it talking about the one of the horses of the apocalypse being the dude who's headless. Abigail Mills is like, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And then Ichabod's like, okay, back then when I was under George Washington, he, he and I were cool. We were smoking and everything and then he's talking about oh yeah by the way this war is gonna be making or breaking the whole entire universe this whole entire world it's not just about freedom it's just like he tells Ichabod to go on a secret super mission where he has to kill the guy who would make himself known on the battlefield and he would have a mark he's like an assassin or something so he would have a mark and guess what the mark is the mark is a bow and arrow like the four horsemen except it would have been cool if he just had a bow. You didn't have to make him decapitate people. I know it's aesthetically pleasing and it makes sense. If you were going to do the first horseman of the apocalypse, he should have been wielding a bow. This whole on his hand thing is like really annoying. And yes, if you change that, you would have had to change because Abigail was, that's one of the things that she talked about was he had a scar on his hand and she could identify it. But you could have wrote that out. There really isn't like, that's not big of a deal. Just give this man a bow and take his ax away. You can tell Abby Mills 
is black because the moment he starts saying that, the moment he starts saying crap, she's like, all right, all right, let's go. Field trip's over. So Ichabod's like, nah, we got to stay here. And she's like, I don't believe the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. And then he's like, we have to kill this dude because when I chopped his head off, he didn't die. He's the embodiment of death. So he's dangerous and he's finishing what he started. So hilariously, the father from the beginning, the priest guy starts running outside crazy and he sees the horseman and he hears him first but he sees him and then he starts doing magic and starts manipulating chains to grab him like <laughs> out of nowhere like this show keeps you on your toes the priest guy was like i'll never tell you where it is i'm willing to die and it shows a pov of him getting stabbed with the axe this show is like really fun it's really really fun like the music is really fun cinematography is really fun there's a panning shot of the crime scene where the father was attacked by the horseman and there's this horse walking with the guy and then it's chopped off because in that scene where he was fighting him he breaks the sign and it shows it looks as if the guy on the horse is headless and i think that's really cool so Abby pulls up to the crime scene and it does kind of look like he's beheaded. He's dead though, but um, Ichabod is forced to stay in the car and then there's that hawk that I was talking about in the beginning on the sign that is in front of him and it flies away. Ichabod somehow gets out of the car and the black dude's like, what? Get this dude out of here. How come he wasn't locked up in a straight jacket? And she's like, he was with me when this happened, so he's not the killer. And the wound is cauterized, so whatever weapon he's using, it's hot. And it don't make no sense. It shouldn't be that hot. And he's like, you just went against my direct order. And so he's like, get that man out of here and to the insane asylum or you're going to be suspended. So that's her thing right now. So Harold, not Kumar, says, man, you need to let this dude go. He's like ruining your life right now. And that's all he has to say to her. <laughs> Not also, um, again, sorry for your loss because dude just died. <laughs> Mills is like, why didn't you stay in the car? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm stupid. I can't listen to that. I'm insane. So he's like chasing this bird to the cemetery on the place where the priest was trying to go before he was killed. And the bird takes him to his wife's grave and it says on her tombstone that she was burned for witchcraft. It does a little flashback to where she was like, I need to tell you something, something I haven't told you, but it doesn't say what exactly she wanted to tell him. And he's like, what more proof do you need? And she's like, you want me to believe you? Because like no evidence, like what is going on here? What about what are these four horse at apocalypse? And Abby tells Crane that she can't get involved with this because she's trying to get a promotion. Once again, men trying to hold women back. He's like, you trying to leave Sleepy Hollow? She's like, yeah, I'm trying to get more money. And he's like, you can't leave. Nope, no, 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 you can't leave. Like, guys never have to, like, make a sacrifice for their bill, for their paycheck. They just get to be. And then the girls have to sacrifice their womb or they have to sacrifice luxury. They have to sacrifice independence. Like, do you want your soul or do you want, like, I don't know, like, it's really horrible. It's so annoying. But he's like, no, you can't leave. He's like, oh, our fates are entwined now. Running away won't change anything. Which is funny that he says she's running away when she was already getting a promotion. She's like, I can't go through this again. And he's like, what again? What's happened to you in your life that's making you question this now? And she's like, I'm not having this conversation with you. There's no reason for us to talk about this. And she's like, man, you feel like you are acting like you were... In the Revolutionary War, fighting for George Washington. I'm not playing these games with you. So now she's in this insane asylum with him, dropping him off in the insane asylum. And she's like, I got your own cell. She's like, oh, that's the best I can do. And he's like, man, it's better than that goddamn cave. Like he sat in any amount of time in that cave. He's acting like he lived there to, for 250 years. He didn't. He just woke up today. So that didn't make no sense, but whatever. And then she's like, you asked me what happened? And she's like, here's what happened. She said her and her sister Jenny in high school were walking home one night. And all of a sudden, there were these four white trees. They blacked out when they were found on the side of the road. 
the both of the girls, her and her sister, were telling people that, oh, this is what happened. But Abby was like, you know what? I'm just going to not anymore because people were treating them poorly because they thought they were crazy. And now her sister is in and out of insane asylums just because Abby didn't stick to the plan and didn't stick to the story. So she feels regret. And since she's a lieutenant, he calls her a lieutenant because I guess that's what they said way back when. And she's like, just call me Abby. And he's like, sorry about your partner. And this is when she starts to cry. So old girl's going through Sheriff Crab stuff and finds a king behind a picture of her in his office. She's looking around to see where it fits and it fits into this long file case thing she finds a recorder of sheriff crabs talking about the witch trials and trials of witchcraft and stuff he has files on the occult and religious fanatics and whatnot on the recording he's talking about how murders are all connected basically through the lines of where the colonizers colonized in the beginning while he's talking about the occult and whatnot he discusses abby and her sister and what they describe to police as a demon-like creature in four white trees in 1882 there was a farmer who said the exact same thing in the exact same location supposedly the white trees represent forest men of the apocalypse and i hate that because there's only one white horse there's like a white horse a black horse a pale horse and red horse i think there's a red horse in there somewhere but they should all be different colors and maybe they thought the color scheme wouldn't work with the darkness of the show but i think they should have just made the trees different instead of making them all white makes no sense but he does say that he thinks that the demon is trying to raise the four horsemen he's like i want to tell abby but i don't know how like bro do it just say it just just open your mouth open your lips and teeth and say it sheriff crabs is like oh my goodness i feel like the closer i get to the answer the closer something gets to me to get me and then the black guy's like what are you doing that guy that's just like a jerk this whole entire show like he's really a jerk but she's like oh nothing i'm just looking through old files to see if i can find any leads and she's like i didn't find nothing <laughs> he's like i'm not gonna say this again let us do our job and it's like what are you talking about bro she's not gone yet she should still be able to work what are you talking about you piece of scum let women do what they would like to do with their lives you piece of garbage i hate you so we go back to ichabod and he wakes up in the asylum and the hawk is in there somehow and then he sees katrina through glass that father turns out to be a part of katrina's coven katrina is ichabod crane's wife and she's like my body was never buried over there my body's great safe secret like he knew where it was but he died so now nobody knows but at least nobody knows. And I think that's that's the thing. See, villains know what's up. Villains will be like, I'm going to kill this dude anyway. I don't even care. But the people, like the good guys will be like, I'll spare you. And then like it's 10,000 times worse after. But so Katrina says that with her body is the horseman's skull. And she says he can't find it. He shouldn't. He can't find it. And he's like, oh, so you're a witch. You, you betray her even though you betrayed the queen. I'm just saying, Ichabod. But she's like, I'm of a good coven. And that's what Sheriff Krabs was talking about. He's like, there's a good coven and then there's a bad coven. Which is like, oh my goodness, okay, dude, bro. Like, psh, coven's a coven, bro. Like, let it be. She said, when you killed the horsemen, your bloodline smerged. And like I said, we're going to keep seeing this, <laughs> this same scene for a long time. Almost every episode, they'd be like, shush, 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 showing him fall out like it's hilarious she was like the only way to save you was to do a spell on both of you so okay like stay with me this doesn't make sense to me so they did a spell to stop the horsemen but it doesn't make no sense so even though they're linked how did she know they were linked just don't make no sense so katrina his wife says oh put that spell okay so did you think that Ichabod wasn't going to come back or did you want him to come back or why would he come back? What was the point of bringing him back? In this instance, we know later, we know later. I'm just saying in this instance, how are we supposed to know that? How are we supposed to know that? Anywho, so he said, who woke up the horseman? And she's like, the same person who trapped me up in here. And then sh 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 something, the, the creature's coming. And she's like, oh, we don't have much time. Who we got to go? But continuing, so Katrina is talking to Ichabod and she's like, release me, find me. And also, by the way, the Headless Horseman's weakness is sunlight. So where is he in the like daytime? 
bro? Like, is he like digging a hole so he can go in there, bro? Whatever. I don't remember. He's like, I don't understand. Where? Where? And she's like, it's in Washington's Bible. She tells him that he's the first witness. And this is going to be essential. So remember those words, the first witness. So he wakes up and he's still in the insane asylum, basically Arkham. And there's a woman that's about to sedate him for who knows what. And before she can put the needle in his arm, Abigail Mills pulls up and she's like, I'm taking him back into custody. Get y'all dirty, greasy, nasty, stank hands off of him, you scumbag. Technically, but what she actually says is stand down because she's got a court order. So after Ichabod was sitting there struggling and looked crazy, he gets up and gets his coat and walks out like nothing happened. That's hilarious. Abby's like, we got to walk fast because we've got like one minute before she reads that and realizes it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> So she starts talking to Ichabod in the car while they're driving about Sheriff Krabs and him having a bunch of case files. So in 1776, they're like, okay, so George Washington signed this map or whatever, and that's what she's got in her hands. And Ichabod's like, I've seen this before. And he's like, how did this end up in your sheriff's cabinet? And technically, how do you know? I mean, I guess she's called it a cabinet, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you can catch them acting like Ichabod is from their time. And that's like one of the examples. Because it's like, I don't know, in 17, whatever his name, whatever time. Were they calling it cabinets? But whatever. She's like, I don't know. Also, another thing that's a little annoying is Abigail Mills tells Ichabod that Sheriff Crabs arrested her and her sister the day she saw the four white trees and the demon. And I'm like, why did you arrest them? What? Did somebody die? What right do you have to arrest those two girls? It did, whatever. And maybe it's because he just wanted to talk to them and he didn't have any other reason to. And like in the sense that he was like, what did you see? I completely understand. He believed it was real. And then Ichabod's like, it is real. And the next scene, I guess, kind of explains where old dude goes. So he leaves his horse above ground, even though I don't understand why the horse is above ground other than aesthetic reasons. Because if the horse is immortal, if he'd been here for a while, then he can go into the water too. But the horse is right next to the water and the headless horseman pops out. So I guess that's where he go when it's daytime. But that don't make no sense because you could still put sun through water but whatever so she calls harold not kumar and says we know where the headless horseman is going to be next and it's the church and he's like how do you know that because the wick job and she's like man just do it bro so this guy's named andy but i'm definitely gonna still call him harold not kumar just because it's funny but she's like please you gotta believe me and he's like i just got home bro i can't do this no more and being a little loser and she's begging him to help he says he'll finally call it in he gets home and he sees that the door's busted open and like i said the cinematography the camera moving camera angles the music everything's great about this show except when it goes bad and i'll let you know if you want to see me do more seasons of sleepy hollow please let me know in the comments like subscribe share get this video to a thousand likes and i might consider it harold nakumar plays cop and runs around his apartment and notices that his gun safe is ransacked and sees the headless horseman and he does not act surprised to see that this person has no head and he says i know where it is and headless horseman's like let's go son they're at the church and they dig up this dude's skull, his eyes open, and then they immediately see the Headless Horseman with a shotgun because, like I said, he ransacked that dude's house. Headless Horseman got that piece and he's just shoddying everywhere. And then Abigail Mills saves Ichabod Crane. So we see Harold not Kumar pull up and Abby's like, I need a gun from the back of your car. And she's like, where's backup? And he's like, <laughs> like something is up with this dude. So he didn't call backup and he said he did. And it's clear he didn't because they're not here. Abby calls for backup and before she can even call and it's off screen, which is really cool because I definitely didn't want to see this. Harold not Kumar knocks out Abigail Mills. We hear it and the, like the angle of the camera, it's just this show 
could have been great. In the next scene, Ichabod is literally wailing on the Headless Horseman. Haven't we gotten clearly this man is immortal and he can't die from natural means, all right? So can you please stop beating on this dude and run? Could y'all find a place to go? Can y'all make him go into a building and blow it up? Can y'all do something that's a little bit more intelligent, if you will, honestly, something better? And literally, Ichabod gets two-pieced by the Headless Horseman in hand-to-hand combat. It's pretty funny to watch a guy that's headless beat up on someone who's got a head. It's hilarious. And Harold Nakumar is snatching up Abigail Mills, and he's like, I told you to stay out of this. And I can't stand this guy. I can't stand this guy. Not the actor. The actor is fine. As far as I know, I'm talking about this character. And then Harold Nakumar starts caressing up on Abigail Mill's face, talking about, oh, I'm going to protect you. I'll try to protect you. And then like you start touching her face. I'm glad she bit you. That's crazy. Like even if you had the best of intentions, first of all, you just knocked her out. Everything's on the table. Stab him. Shoot him when you get the chance. So she does what any awesome girl would do and bites the crap out of his finger and has him on that gunpoint. Son! So finally, after getting two-pieced by a headless man, Ichabod runs away with his head. So backup finally gets here, even though I don't think Harold Nakumar called for backup, but Abby was about to and she opened the line. So they probably were like, okay, something's up. Even though she didn't get to say much, she did say a little bit. So I'm just going to say that the backup's here because that happened. So the backup gets here and they literally see the headless horseman in the street. And while that's happening, Abby has that dude at gunpoint and Harold Nakumar is like, you can't kill him. He's death itself. And she's like, boy, if you don't. And so now there's more witnesses to this headless horseman being headless. So now there's evidence basically, because even though she said she saw and he said he saw it from that dude and her, it's giving xenophobe because he's from England or whatever and it's giving misogyny because they saw it but these two guys are gonna see it and now it's it's something that's true but sun's coming up and it's really comical to see this dude that's headless turn around as if he's looking but he turns around as if he's got eyes and and faces the sky as the sun's coming up the police officers are still giving him commands instead of shooting but that dude he's he's got his peace on him He's got the Annie, are you okay gun, bro? And he just starts ripping it. He just starts ripping it at them. Abby runs to go see what the fire is about. And Harold Nakumar says, you can't kill him. (laughs) So Abby admits that she calls them and she's like, what are y'all doing? Because they just shooting now all of a sudden, like they should have been shooting before. And I know that I said, don't shoot him, run. But they don't know that he can't die. They could have done something and they just have him at gunpoint for the longest, but they don't know the rules. So what's the point of having the gun on him if you're not going to shoot it? I'm sorry. But funny enough, they start shooting the innocent person like they start shooting at Ichabod and she's like, "Uh uh-uh, what y'all doing? You weren't shooting when there was a crazy person with no head, but you're going to start shooting the person that's speaking English and talking to you, bro. And if I'm not mistaken, because again, I've seen this a long time ago. I was watching Sleepy Hollow when it was brand spanking new, fresh, new episode out. Just like I did Grimm, just like I did Merlin. I was a little late to Merlin, but I still was watching it when the new episodes were coming on. It's really funny. It's It gets really funny. When you watch this show in hindsight, this scene in particular is comical to me. Because we're seeing this guy's skull, right? They show you the skull of the Headless Horseman, his head. He's looking for it. No one, at this point, no one knows what's going to happen when he gets it. They just know that they need to keep it away from him. So he runs off into the sunrise. He he rides off into the sunrise because the sun's coming up. And he's got that piece. He got that piece with him still. So they got to worry about him having a gun, even though it's like, bro, how you know how this gun work? How you know how this gun work? You from 1795 or whatever, bro. What you talking about? Anyway, they've got this skull. The funny thing about this skull is they make it seem like this guy's like a creature, right? They make him seem like he's like this monster beast. Like you don't know what's behind the mask type situation. When in all reality, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I'm going to just let you know when you realize who this guy is, when you see who he is for real, the funniest thing in the world. And I, I, that's why I think 
in the beginning, I feel, I really do feel like the first season was supposed to be like the only season. Because there's a lot of things that get retconned throughout the remainder of the seasons. And I got to rewatch it again. I may be mistaken. But from what I can remember, that's how it went down. And it's hilarious. And if you watch this whole show and this whole season and this whole series, you'll find humor in it too. So now they survive and they're together. And the funniest thing, it's not funny to me. This is actually serious and it makes me angry. I don't necessarily like when a male, a girl and a boy or a a person, two people who just so happen to be really, really good friends are in a relationship. Except those few times where it actually makes sense that they're in a relationship that's romantic example jill valentine and chris redfield i like them as a couple and they haven't been confirmed to be as a couple by capcom yet but it would make sense if they got married because he already has a sister he don't need no platonic relationship he needs himself some jill valentine and that's all i gotta say on that but when it came to this show specifically okay specifically this scene right now that i'm gonna describe where everything's all said and done music's like and they're all together it looks like they're setting up for a romance between them but i'm gonna let you know that right now so you don't get your hopes up never happens never happens in any substantial way. It's completely platonic between them. And the reason why I think it didn't work in the time it happened, I don't believe they wanted Ichabod and Abby to be together because it would be a mixed couple. It would be a interracial couple. I really do feel like it. There is actually some accounts of people talking about how both her and the Ichabod actor had issues on set. But guess who was able to finish out the story and who wasn't? That's right. The same people who were both sick at the same time and one was treated with kindness and the other one was treated with trash. Mm-mm. No sorry, Bob. Anywho. This information does not negate the fact that regardless, there is no romance on the show between Abigail Mills and Ichabod Crane. It never happens. Like I said, Katrina's still alive, so it's kind of like strange. It would be kind of strange if there was a throuple. It would still be kind of strange, and the implications would be horrific. But like I said, if Katrina wasn't a part of the situation, I do feel like Abigail and Ichabod would have made a good couple on screen, not the actual actors and actresses. This is a job. This is a job, whether or not y'all cared about each other in IRL, didn't matter. This was a job, and I do believe it was a missed opportunity to not have Katrina here and to have Abby and both leading roles in a relationship. Another reason why they didn't become a couple is supposedly both of the actors didn't like each other. But this is a job. It, it, it is what it is. Come on, calm down, get out of here. Not everybody has to like each other. This isn't Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie story. Like, and then you saw how that turned out anyway. Pretty terrible because Brad Pitt's trash. And I'm not going to talk about Brad Pitt here. But regardless, I would not want no like love triangle between Katrina and Abigail Mills and Ichabod Crane. Unless it turned into a a throuple threesome, there is absolutely positively no way that I would accept that. And even then, I kind of don't like that because it's kind of like they were already married and then they're adding this black woman. It's just not, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for their coupling, but their chemistry on the show, what they portray, because like I said, Nicole is very talented and she's very educated and she deserves respect for that. She deserves respect. Whether or not, She was in the wrong for whatever reason at whatever time. I do believe it was brought upon because people were not respecting her like they respected even some scum loser bum. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who this dude is. I ain't never seen him in nothing but Sleepy Hollow. But that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Please let me know if you've ever seen this dude, this loser dude. And I'm going to have more heat for him because mm, we'll, we'll talk about it later. But I digress. But like I said, if you get this video to a thousand likes, I might consider doing the first season and then we'll have a goal for that one. And then I'll may do the second, third and fourth. Who knows? So that dude from American Gods or whatever, he's like, man, I'd ought to throw you in jail for going against me a third time. But two men have corroborated your story. If it was two women, I don't think he would have 
actually cared but he was like two men said it so you obviously be telling the truth and i see this pickled head up in this pickle jar it literally looked like a pickled head in a pickle jar but he's like okay um this dude is taking a plea deal but he won't talk to nobody unless it's you and this fool ichabod so he's like well that's great so anyway aren't you leaving in a week and i don't know why this guy wants her to leave so bad i can't remember but she sits there and she's like nah i'm not leaving no more because she basically has to deal with this situation and it's annoying because like i said where she was going she was going to get a pay raise she was going to get a raise in standard of living she was going to get a raise in life and now she doesn't she gets to stay at this bum job and not get any money and i'm not saying she should have left because it's like oh bye like a black girl would have been left but i'm saying it just sucks it just sucks that she couldn't do better with her life and she had to be staying here or whatever but i'm more salty about it happening irl for dumber reasons than there's literally a war on the horizon in the form of four horsemen in the form of a horseman headless mind you but that's what she said she said she's staying and then old dude from american gods or whatever he's like this is our only lead so go talk to this dude both of y'all like bro if i was ichabod i'd be like you just call me crazy f you and your whole family but maybe a little nicer because he is english and that man is black so i wouldn't have want him to do nothing crazy but ichabod's just like been a part of this now he's just like monk adrian monk solving crimes it's hilarious because he just crawled out the ground and now he's got a job that does not pay him so basically before they do anything else ichabod takes abby to the side and says that in his dream with katrina she talked about a witness and she's talking about the book of revelations and he's like yeah there's two witnesses so he thinks it's her and him who he talks about a seven year period which makes me think that it was setting up the show to go over a span of seven years or unless that's seven years ago when she was in high school if she is so she's 25 years old if that's the case that they're talking about seven year period before now but he's talking about seven year period for them or whatever in the book of relations it's to stop the world from dying or whatever so ichabod who has everything to gain and everything to lose tells abigail mills oh we're supposed to be destined what if we were called you got to finish what your sheriff started and then that like brings like her to agree and i think that's manipulation on ichabod's part because she just lost him and he was like a father to her basically and that's just very manipulative to say oh finish what he started and it's like yeah whatever yeah he did start it and stuff but like the way he said it it just sounded very manipulative and of course he wants her help to bring back his dead wife and i would not be talking about this if they didn't treat this actress so poorly behind the scenes or if they didn't treat the character on the show so poorly like she's nothing I'm telling you right now, you watch this whole series. What I am not mistaken on and what I do remember is them giving her some kiss, booty cheek, good for nothing, scum storyline. And because they wanted to say she was quote unquote difficult because she was sick at the same time as the Ichabod actor, but he was treated very well. They're going to kill her off in some way. Spoiler. They're going to kill her off in the craziest way and just replace her. Not like replace her, her actress. They didn't replace her. Her character was dead. They killed her off. They replaced her with her sister, basically. The show. And I'm letting you know that now so that you don't get your hopes up. You don't get your hopes up like anything's great. This show is great and the premise is great, but there are a lot of problems. And I'd love to talk about them. If you want to see a breakdown, let me know. But if this video gets a thousand likes, I may consider doing season by season videos. So Harold Not Kumar is sitting in a cell. That's the guy that they're trying to get to talk because Abby told that he knocked her out and now he's in handcuffs sitting in a holding cell like scum, like the scum he is. And then there's the creature that Abby saw, that Ichabod saw, that her sister saw. And he's like, oh, you failed. He's like, oh, please give me another chance. And he starts whining. And that dude pulls up, opens the door, gets close to him. And one of the funniest scenes you'll ever see on the show, maybe there's funnier ones that I can't remember, but you're going to laugh when you see this. This is crazy. So as Abby and Ichabod are coming in, Ichabod always looks so out of place. He always has his back so straight. It looks like he's got like a stick that's literally vertically keeping him up. 
the entire time. And he's got this book to his side that he's been swaying around like the Bible or whatever. Like, it's so funny. Harold Nakumar's neck literally gets snapped like a Pez. It's a Pez head situation. And he dies as they're coming in. So it kind of looks like they killed him. And another funny thing of this scene, like Abby looks to the mirror and sees some like creature that looks like Dovey mixed with Gollum with horns, like walking crazy in a forest. <laughs> and we hear Sheriff Krabs's voice talk about in a pale horse and he rode on the pale horse and it was death and death is this and that is this, like basically whatever it says in the Bible, Revelations, whatever. And then it's the end, that's the calling card, Sleeping Hollow. That's it. And like I said, this show's great, except a lot of flaws that were probably driven by racism behind the scenes. Because if you don't respect your actors and actresses equally, you're obviously going to see favoritism and you're obviously going to see it through the art. We can clearly see y'all were struggling in the background to get it together solely because you make me sick. And probably there's a dash of misogyny in there too, because she was a woman and they're treating her character like she's a side character don't make no sense but when she got sick same time mind you oh you gotta stay here you gotta work girl if you don't work diva why are you such a diva get to work like treating her poorly and then she got worse because of the illness that she wasn't allowed to take care of and then they called her difficult and I have yet to see her in anything substantial in a long time please let me know in the comments if you know of anything she's been in I will most definitely watch it just for her because i do believe just like tony shalhoub and i don't know why tony shalhoub isn't in a lot of things maybe he just is very particular with what he does but just like tony shalhoub i don't see him in a lot of things and i would like to see him in more things i would love to see nicole in more things because she's such a good actress like i said i do believe she graduated juilliard i do believe she's highly educated and she deserves her flowers every day but that's it that's the end of sleepy hollow season one episode one pilot let me know if you liked it if you want me to talk about the first season in its entirety please get this video to a thousand likes and I may consider it, but I am trying to get through all of these first tastes. Each month, I will try to get a video out for the first taste, which is the first season of the first episode of one of my favorite series, and I will explain to you why I loved it from beginning to end or why it was trash, but there's a lot of elements to this show that is really wonderful. Um, misogyny and racism in the back aside the show's premise was really wonderful and i do believe it gives a good first impression with the pilot episode it's tv 14 if you would like to watch it it is free on hulu i don't know if you need a subscription to hulu like the super subscription whatever premium subscription because i have the premium subscription i don't know what i'm missing if i don't have one so you just check on there and see if you can watch it. I do believe premium is worth it. But if it's between getting groceries or getting premium Hulu, get your groceries. Like don't don't waste your money if you can't do it because I already know like I'm struggling. Everyone's struggling right now. Gas is crazy. Meat is crazy. You go to the store. It's literally $100 more than ever before. It is really getting crazy out here. Let me know if you like the video. Please check out my stream, the princess of darkness underscore between all those words on Twitch. I stream consistently. Apex Legends. Sometimes I play poker. Check out my TikTok where I put Apex Legends highlights m the dragon at m the dragon like Megan the stallion t h e e and I hope you guys enjoyed. I am done for now.